Hi guys, this is Pete, N6QW, and I wanted to give you a little tour of uh, my uh, my latest rig, uh, which is a Softrock V63 transceiver, which is right here. This is a surface mount version of the V63 uh, Softrock. It's got the 80-40 uh, 40 me 80, 40 meter uh, bandpass uh, filter, uh, final amplifier filter in there. This is the sound card which is a StarTech 7.1 and this over here is the Raspberry Pi 2 here is a little mini uh, keyboard that we're using this thing will fit in your shirt pocket and you can see that right here and this is the monitor screen and actually it's nothing more than a uh, 19 inch computer screen that has an HDMI output or, or, or DV, DVID input and the output of the Raspberry Pi is HDMI. So we have a cable here in the back that is an adapter cable that takes uh, HDMI signals and puts them in the DVID format. So we're able to use this 19 inch computer, computer monitor. The Raspberry Pi has an ethernet input, a 10100, uh, has four USB ports has an audio output port and the power supply port here. There's also a 40 pin uh, general purpose input output uh, header here that you can gain functionality to the Raspberry Pi using uh, that header. But for right now, I am using the uh, four USB ports. Um, typically, I would have a, a, a little wireless uh, Wi-Fi card in here, uh, a little adapter and it's an IDMAX uh, 150 which works uh, quite quite well there's no software installed just plug it in the Pi recognizes it but I do have a uh, separate external mouse here a little mouse on, on this keypad right here uh, with my fat fingers is really hard to operate so it's it's some um, there's a bit of difficulty in my doing that way in the back here is the USB to I2C adapter so we're able to, one of the USB ports feeds this adapter, and this is what gives the signal inputs to the soft rock over here. It provides the tuning information. There's an SI570 chip on this board, and the I2C inputs through this adapter uh, change, enable you to change the frequency, but a lot of the other functionality, such as TR, the single red line right here, activates the TR, and I, <coughs> I do have an external... Uh, RCA jack here that um, enables me to connect an external linear amplifier. The two interconnects between the sound card or, or 12 inch long piece of uh, uh, adapter cable 3.5 millimeter stereo a plug on each end. So you have a line in uh, into the sound card here in the line in <clears throat> into the soft rock a line out uh, out of the uh, sound card USB sound card uh, line out into the soft rock so not much to it uh, on its own it puts out about one watt and uh, I, I have made some contacts but it's pretty marginal so uh, it's it's much better to use uh, an external amplifier and I have a 50 watt amp on here uh, last night on 40 meters with my droopy dipole which is kind of like just parked next to a tree up about center 17 feet at the center and it gets down to about eight feet on the ends um, with that droopy dipole, uh, I, I was actually heard on the east coast running 50 watts on 40 meters. So uh, I, I'm kind of amazed. Uh, he couldn't quite make out the call, but he knew I was in there. And I bet if I had that dipole up uh, properly, uh, I, I would have uh, completed the uh, completed the QSO. Uses a little standard flash card, which I've got in my hand here. And the one I have in there now is a 32 uh, gigabyte. And I highly recommend... Uh, it, it takes a minimum of, of eight, but boy, if you put anything else on the Pi, uh, you're going to uh, really exceed the, the capacity of that, that flash card. So I recommend putting a 32, and there's a 32 in there now. The other accessory that I bought for this, I actually I bought a starter, starter kit and a whole bunch of hardware came with it, including this uh, plastic case right here. But I recently uh, found a, a little uh, stick-on heat sink. And the uh, Broadcom uh, processor in there, uh, when this thing is cranking, 
uh, really gets warm. So uh, it's a good idea. You can get those from Jane Cole Electronics. They're under two bucks. I, I bought a bunch of them because I have several pies, and uh, so it's a it's a good addition. So not much to it. I am using a uh, over here, and I'll just put this in the field of view. Kind of a headset, uh, a headset with a boom mic, and I have this set up so that uh, I can hear the, the signals in the headphones. And this uh, this boom mic works uh, quite well with the uh, with the Raspberry Pi. So this is a kind of the tour of the hardware. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, stop this video right now, and I'm going to put an external pair of speakers on it, uh, powered speakers, and uh, that's quite a quite good buy for about 15 bucks from Logitech. And they work quite well here, so this way, uh, when I take the next video that I'll string onto this, uh, you can actually hear the signals, and we'll go over the uh, some of the functionality of the uh, the, the panel. So this is uh, the initial tour uh, of my new rig, which uses the Softrock V63, the surface mount version, which is right here. Uh, external sound card, which is right here, which is the StarTech, and the Raspberry Pi in the plastic case. The little adapter, uh, our small keyboard. And I do have an external mouse here. So this is Pete, N6QW. Thanks for writing Hi, along. guys. Pete, N6QW here. And we're demonstrating the Raspberry Pi here in operation with the RSDR transceiver. First thing I want to draw your attention to is the display. And these are the signals here. And one of the nice features of the uh, Quisk is you'll notice there's no signals over here. The duplicate this so that's the that would be the image uh, so the image reject functionality is quite good as a matter of fact what you're able to do is pick the pick spots along the whole spectrum and perform an image uh, reduction um, process so that these values are stored so as you tune across the whole 40 meter band or 20 meter band you're able to uh, it, it internally sums these uh, settings for both phase and amplitude so that you get image rejection across the whole uh, the whole uh, band that you're looking at so it takes a little time to do that but the figures are the information is stored uh, in the in the uh, on the uh, memory drive the, the flash drive so this way that uh, when you go on the band with that particular uh, Pi with that particular sound card with that particular transceiver uh, you're able to uh, a accurately and adequately uh, ensure that you have uh, image rejection of the opposite sideband. So this is quite good. Um, uh, some of the others are, are, are singular adjustment. You perform it at one point and uh, it may not hold across the whole band, but in this one in particular they paid a lot of attention to that. So again, you look here, you don't see anything over here that's the, uh, the uh, opposite sideband. So uh, really, really, really uh, quite good in, in that uh, regard. So anyway, um, We'll listen around here a little bit, but I did want to point that out. And uh, that's an S9 plus about 17 dB signal right there. There's another signal right there, and there's one right there. So they're quite close. It's an excellent champagne. So there's, in my opinion, there's now, three kilohertz wide, and here's two. I went to a party one time in Las Vegas where somebody bought us a $106 bottle of that Dom Perignon or whatever it was. This has got two kilohertz bandwidth right here. A lot of functionality in this panel. You have all the bands right here. You have uh, you can mute it. Uh, AGC noise blanker notch. Uh, there's a test functionality. You can set different bandwidths all the way up to three kilohertz. Upper and lower side band. AM, FM, digital. Uh, you can look at the waterfall. You'll see the information here. And there's the waterfall. Maybe some 
<clears throat> See right there. Uh, there's a scope. You can look at the signal. Pretty nice. That's the fast Fourier transform. And you can even look at the uh, receive wide filter, and uh, we'll change these here. You can see the filter getting a little bit narrow, so it lets you see the bandwidth that you're looking at. There's 2,000 hertz, 3,000 hertz. So uh, quite, quite nice. Put the graphic back on. This is Pete, N6QW. N6QW here. Right, November 6th, Quebec Whiskey. Okay, I got Jay Bird on the line right now. He's hearing you guys, but uh, he's, uh, he's got to do some work. So uh, let me say, say goodbye to him. I'll be right back. Okay, there was a week break, uh, November 6th, Quebec Whiskey, K6QBZ. Uh, K6QBZ, November 6th, Quebec Whiskey. Thank you for hearing my little signal here. Name is Pete, we're in Newberry Park, and I'm only running about uh, 40 watts. About Well, I'm sorry, I'm only running about 1 watt right now. Well, I don't have the amp on. Uh, a little SDR, homebrew SDR transceiver with uh, running with a ras Raspberry Pi. K6QBZ, N6QW, running 1 watt. I'm now on, I now got the amp on, that's a little more power. K6SSC, Lee, I can hear you, uh, Pete. Uh, you're in Newberry Park, I'm in Newberry Springs, and I heard you just fine on one watt. Wow, well thank you. Uh, this is a, uh, this is kind of a first for me. Just a couple of days ago, I got the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, working with the uh, soft rock transceiver. So uh, I, I didn't have the amp on. I'm, I'm glad that someone heard me, but uh, thank you for allowing me to break. And I uh, wonder how the audio quality is. Uh, I'd be kind of interested. I've made a few adjustments here, and uh, I just uh, just always worry that my signal isn't up to par. And I think the call is K6SSC in Newberry Springs. This is N6QW, Pete in Newberry Park. Yeah, it'll be a pretty good storm at Long Beach. Also went to Hatchaby, your S9, and they don't play with the audio, audio it's fine. Well, thank you so much. That's uh, <laughs> that's wonderful to hear. You know, you uh, you you worry about squeezing another watt or two out, and uh, you're not sure that's the right thing to do. Well, thank you for allowing me to break, and thank you for the signal reports. And uh, I'll just uh, move off the side here. So thank you so much, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. This is N6QW, going to be clear. Yeah, the antenna is a droopy dipole. Uh, it's uh, only uh, the center is only up 17 feet. Why well, are you doing something right? You're five nine now with the amp on, and uh, at least Q five with the one watt. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate. It. Glad we're making it down to Valley Center. Well, I'll let you gentlemen continue, and thank you for allowing me to break, and thank you so much for the signal reports. This is N6QW. Going to be clear.